DHEA is often looked at as a supplement, like, oh, it's a precursor to testosterone. Is that useful? And in men, they find like no performance enhancing benefit or raising of testosterone whatsoever. In women, they actually find in individuals who are using combined oral contraceptives, they can completely restore their total and free T to near baseline whilst maintaining their combined oral contraceptive routine. Like it's so significant on their T levels. It's absolutely insane. I've been doing some posts recently about how, you know, people are, there's good, there are good data of how people's sense of dip sweat from different people can impact uh, notions of, uh, you know, attractiveness. There's a whole literature on that. There's a whole literature on how um, the smell of women's sweat can cause testosterone increases in men. Uh, if women are taking oral contraception, um, then uh, that effect tends to be blunted a little bit, this kind of thing. I mean, there's tons of literature in humans uh, uh, yeah. on this stuff. And, yeah. you know, hormones are powerful. I mean, I don't need to tell you that. You're, you're well aware. But yeah. I think as people start to wade into the thinking about this, uh, I just think uh, these are not, um, these are major compounds of, of our health and well-being, but they also can be major compounds of our distress and, and, uh, and sickness. So it's, it's something to, to approach with a lot of caution. The, the mention of like combined oral contraceptives and the effect that has, like I've seen pretty significant detriment to total and free testosterone levels in women who are on them using synthetic progestins in concurrence with ethanol estradiol as a like hyper aggressive estrogen receptor agonist to basically, you know, castrate them essentially is what it's doing. That effect on their psychology and whatnot, and the effect it even has on like their preference of partners, it seems pretty um, glaring in the literature. What is like, for me, I've always told, like, there's a lot of girls who use combined oral contraceptives still. And I've always told them in the ideal scenario, if you're going to use something, go for like a copper IUD, as opposed to like a progestin plus an ethanol estradiol. Do you have any thoughts on like what would be for a female to maintain like peak physiology, like even from a body composition standpoint, obviously crushing your free test by 60, 70% is not ideal when you're using a levonorgestrel or a, you know, one of these other synthetic progestins in the standard birth control preparations. Is there anything like, I guess, obviously this is kind of just like a fucking sex ed question at this point, but I mean, is a copper IUD, you think like the ideal formats to avoid hormonal exposure or do you think the hormonal exposure from some of these like localized like progesterone iud's are like useful or what do you think about that in general yeah it's a really great and important question i mean i'm i'm going to plead ignorance on this because uh, right now i'm trying to find someone uh an endocrinologist who can provide really good answers about uh, female hormone health. And I, I've narrowed the list down to a couple of people. It's, it's been harder to find than you might have imagined. There, there nowadays a lot more information about no, testosterone. female hormones yeah. is like, yeah. like most, very, most people don't even understand the male system, let alone females like next level shit. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I've identified a couple of people um, at major university research centers who are very thoughtful about this. So I'm not being cagey about it. I just, Anything that I would say would would I'd be I'd be uh, off in uh, by a mile or more, and it, but I look forward to getting somebody like that um, in a discussion, and and I'll definitely bring you into that discussion because I think that oh, cool. more and more I'm getting asked questions about um, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, being asked questions about contraception, getting asked questions about this, and it's uh, and gosh, it's really hard to get good answers out there. You know, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. One thing maybe you'll find interesting, just a tidbit, is when I was looking into the combined oral contraceptives detriment to the hormone profile, like in general, like you're essentially inducing self castration is like the whole point of it. Like you're using those progestins are derived from nandrolone, which that progestogenic feedback along with, you know, the estrogen that you're using is what leads to the shutdown, but something that like DHEA is often looked at as a supplement, like, oh, it's a precursor to testosterone. Is that useful? And in men, they find like no performance enhancing benefit or raising of testosterone whatsoever. In women, they actually find in 
individuals who are using combined oral contraceptives, they can completely restore their total and free T to near baseline whilst maintaining their combined oral contraceptive routine. Like it's so significant on their T levels. It's absolutely insane. So that might be a thing. That's into. very interesting. Yeah. I, I overlooked, uh, you reminded me that I overlooked to mention that I tried DHEA, uh, some years ago, I oh, got yeah. zero zip. No yeah, yeah. Actually, the only effect that it gave me was to make me feel kind of lousy. I didn't. I didn't yeah. so <laughs> it's anyway. weird because it's like in men, it's really strange how it works. I don't know if it's like it somehow changes the steroidogenesis cascade based on if you're like a female with low T versus a guy who has like normal T, but it seems to just basically convert to like goes down like the estrogen conversion pathway rather than. I don't know, like it doesn't seem to actually manifest in any like clinical, like significant changes in T. But for women, it's like so, so dramatic and performance enhancing potentially too, that it's like definitely worth looking at. And individuals who are like dead set on remaining on their combined oral contraceptive, but don't like their free test being lowered by 70% or whatever, adding in like a, like a minor dose of DHEA restores it to near baseline. Really crazy. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Yeah, I, I got nothing from DHEA, but um, obviously, it, well, I probably because I, I don't have the right chromosomal arrangement. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs>